This week, Milk Street is in Taipei, Taiwan. It's early evening. I'm standing at Chiang Kai-shek Square, renamed Freedom Square. And we're cooking with just a wonderful cooking school teacher. She's been here for okay. 40 years. Her name is Zhuang Pao Ha. She's been using the old Taiwanese recipes and teaching them to people who actually want to go on to be professional chefs, both here and in America. Now, she's brought back fabulous old-style Taiwanese recipes, still made today, a beef noodle soup. You can find that all over the city. You start with beef bones, make a broth, Lots of spices, lots of depth. We finish up at one of Taipei's most famous restaurants, and we're going to learn how to make three-cup chicken. So please stay with us. Don't change the dial. And watch us as we're in Taipei to learn how to cook the Taiwanese way. Funding for this series was provided by the following. Ferguson's proud to support Milk Street and culinary crusaders everywhere. For more information on our extensive collection of kitchen products, we're on the web at fergusonshowrooms.com. For 25 years, Consumer Cellular's goal has been to provide wireless service that helps people communicate and connect. We offer a variety of no-contract plans, and our U.S.-based customer service team can help find one that fits you. To learn more, visit consumercellular.tv. Cooking happens in the kitchen, but life happens around the kitchen table. The 1919 Collection, celebrating yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Visit us at www.1919cookware.com. Taipei is a city of two million. It's a town of crowded sidewalks, vibrant nightlife, and by the way, the best street food in the world. Our first stop was the Rauha Night Market. Now that's an open street with hundreds of food stalls, including two of my favorite foods, pork pepper buns, the way they're cooked in a tandoor style oven, and a sweetened shaved ice topped with hot mochi balls. These are filled with sesame and peanut paste. I also tried grilled squid, uh, stinky tofu, I actually like that one. It actually tastes good. And pig blood cake, it's a popsicle made from sticky rice and, yeah, pig's blood. Well, that was worth a try. The next day, I visited the founder of the Zone Hua Culinary Teaching Center, Ms. Shuang Bao Hua, to get a lesson in how to make Taiwanese beef noodle soup. I'm here in Taipei with teacher Chuang. She's been cooking here in this cooking school for over 40 years. She reintroduced classic Taiwanese cooking back to Taiwan. Actually, she's trained many of the people who cook in the food stalls in some of the night markets. So uh, how do we start? First, we put beef bone into the boiling water for a few seconds. It's to get rid of the impurity and the taste of blood in the bone. That's a very large beef bone. Oh, I have no milk. I can use this milk to replace. So beef fat and pork and butter. Yes, beef fat. I put this milk in. Okay. The the beef fat comes from what part of the animal? Here. Beef belly. Makes me very uncomfortable. I get rid of this. Good. Let's get rid of that. Okay. Yeah. No, no, Put no, that no. in there. So <laughs> where is it from? It's not. Yeah. <laughs> it's from the beef belly. I mean, to hold that for you. Here, I'll do something. Now I'm cooking. This is great. So, so do I get the t-shirt now saying, I, I, I went to Taipei and I helped? Is that what, <laughs> I finally did something? <laughs> A little bit. 
<laughs> She'll treat you the beef soup noodle. Okay, okay. <laughs> instead of the T-shirt. That's good. Yeah. Okay, that's the deal. 牛肉都是美国的，美国的才会好吃。哦、oh. ，澳洲的比较没有那么好吃。呃、uh, ，We like to use uh America import beef. Uh, What? Import beef so, import from, from America. Ah, oh, yeah. so good. Very good. Because its meat is more tender. Uh, it's American beef. It's more tender. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Food. Yes. Okay. okay. Do I get to eat it now? <laughs> okay. Too much. Instead of talking, okay, I get okay. to eat it. Yes, please. Hmm. Oh man. <laughs> this is delicious. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. And you're a great teacher too. And we went to Taipei without you <laughs> again. And、uh, the first night we went to the Rao Street Market, which is this three football field long corridor of, of food stalls in the center and sides. Real hundred, hundred fifty food stalls. Ice cream burritos. Anybody? Yes,、uh, please. Rotisserie corn with this great chili paste on、oh. top. Well, then we went, of course,、uh, to the Zonghua Culinary Academy and learned to make beef noodle soup. Now. We've done a little bit differently than we'll do it here, but I think we've come up with really the same taste profile. So how do we do it? First of all, we start with our aromatics: ginger, scallions, and garlic. You could actually prep this dish with a hammer because what we're really going to do is just smash these coins of ginger, add them to our pot, and just use the flat side of a knife. And you know, if you don't want to use a knife, you could always use a small skillet or frying、mm -hmm. pan and just give it a whack. Now we're going to smash the garlic. And this means it's going to release more flavor into the soup, right? It is absolutely. We have six garlic cloves, and that was about a four-inch length of ginger cut into six to eight coins. A little grapeseed oil. It's about a tablespoon, and we're going to cook that over medium just until it's sizzling. It's about three minutes, and we're going to add six scallions. We're going to take the bottoms off, cut the greens off. We're going to save those for later, and now we're just going to sort of roughly chop these and add them to our pot. We're going to cook these aromatics over medium heat just until they really begin to start sizzling. You can smell it; it's just it's smelling great. So it's been about three minutes. So let's start actually building the extra flavor to this broth. And we're going to start with star anise. Really great.、And、they use that in in Taipei too. They do. Yeah. Absolutely one of my favorite ingredients: Sichuan peppercorns. And you know, Chris, these aren't actually peppercorns, right? Yes, they're berries. <laughs> I knew that. They're the husk of a berry, prickly ash. So we're only going to cook those for about 30 seconds, and this is Sichuan chili bean paste. Three tablespoons, three tablespoons of brown sugar. Throw that in. This is two tablespoons tomato paste. I just got it. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! We're going to add a third of a cup of soy sauce and a third cup sake,、uh, rice wine, and give that a stir. And now we're going to add ten cups of water. And what really adds deep, meaty flavor is our meat, of course. It's two pounds of shank, so it's about two cross-cut slabs of shank. We're going to submerge those. We're going to bring it up to a boil over high heat. Then we're going to reduce it to low, cover it, and it takes about two hours for those shanks to really tenderize. So, Chris, it's been two hours.、It、smells. Fantastic. So let's go ahead and pull those shanks and shred the meat off and finish making our soup. Okay. You may have to do a little bit of fishing. Sometimes the meat does come off the bone. So in this dish, the the meat is obviously eaten with the soup, but it's really there as a flavoring, more as the main course, right? Yeah. It's not really about the meat here. It's about the meat flavor. I'm gonna take it over here. We want to shred the meat, so you can just use two forks. I think that's looking pretty good, Chris. What I really want to do, though, is strain that broth through a fine mesh strainer to get out all those aromatics that we just smashed at、mm -hmm. the start, and then we want to defat it before adding the meat back in. Okay. We're gonna cook the rest of the elements of our soup. We have bok choy and noodles. We're gonna blanch both, but you don't actually want to cook either in the soup. And it's 
Four quarts of water, two tablespoons salt. Two tablespoons kosher salt. Yes. <clears throat> right. Good catch. So in goes the salt. Now in goes the bok choy. It's cut into about one inch pieces. How much bok choy was this again? It's about a pound. You don't want to overcook it. About three minutes. Crisp, tender. So Chris, this is looking great. You can see it's translucent. The leaves are softened. We're not cooling it down, so it's going to continue to cook as it waits to go into the soup. Now it's time to cook our pasta, and we're going to cook it right in the same water. Uh, we're going to have eight ounces of pasta. Pretty much any Asian wheat noodle works. You can use a Chinese wheat noodle. You can use a Japanese wheat noodle, like a udon noodle. Or spaghetti. Or you can use spaghetti. These noodles cook in about four minutes, but you always want to start checking earlier because you never know. So Chris, we cooked our pasta, we drained the pasta, then rinsed it in lukewarm water, and then drained it again. So we're ready to make some soup. Okay. Let me start with some noodles here. I assume you're hungry? Uh, for beef noodle soup, yes. Excellent. After I defatted that broth and strained it, put it back in the pot, added that meat, and brought it back up to a simmer. This looks really good. Well, it has all the important food groups. It does. It's got meat, vegetables, and noodles. What's not to love? What's not to love? You can have it plain, of course, but a few extra garnishes are really nice here. So a little Szechuan peppercorn, more of the Szechuan chili paste, adds a little extra kick and dimension, and a few scallions right on top. So I'm going to go right in for a piece of that meat dabbed in the chili bean sauce. Mm. Oh. That flavor is really remarkable. It's very deep. That star anise really comes out. There's a mildness to this because the mm. bok choy and the noodles, but then you have the meat and you have the Sichuan peppercorns, you have a little bit of chili paste and all the other flavors that go in. So straight from Taipei, probably the most ubiquitous uh, recipe in Taiwan, which is a beef noodle soup, Taiwanese beef noodle soup. Uh, easy to make, uh, just a little bit of meat really is flavoring. Nice contrast of textures and flavors. It's one of my really go-to meals uh, any, any time of the week. Monday, Absolutely. Saturday, Sunday, great meal. Here at Mill Street, some of our favorite recipes are called Tuesday night recipes because they can be made well under an hour. Uh, they have a lot of flavor, but they're pretty simple to do. We're gonna use a wok and the shape of the wok, the bowl shape, makes it easier to stir fry to move a lot of stuff around easily. So with that introduction, Josh, now we're gonna cook spicy stir fry cumin beef. That's exactly right. This is about one pound of sirloin tips that have been cut into two inch pieces. We need to start this beef off with a little bit of flavor with one tablespoon of soy sauce, as well as half a teaspoon of black pepper. Give that a little bit of a toss just to make sure that each and every piece of beef does have a little bit of that seasoning. We'll go ahead and mix our sauce. Uh, the sauce that we have here is two and a half tablespoons of soy sauce, four teaspoons of unseasoned rice wine vinegar, as well as one teaspoon of white sugar. And we'll give this a little stir, but we're going to set that aside for now. We won't see that sauce until later. The next step of this recipe is toasting our chilies. We want an assertive heat, so we're working with chili japonese. They're about three times hotter than a jalapeno. So we're going to toast it in a wok set over medium heat. It's going to bring out their bright flavor. So now that these have fully toasted, we're gonna pull them off the heat and transfer them over to a large bowl. I'm going to add in a tablespoon and a half of toasted cumin seeds. We want to bring this up to medium high, so that way we could go ahead. Sure. I'm dead sure. It's going to get really hot. It's going to get really hot, okay. but we want that. So next we're going to cook our onion in two teaspoons of grapeseed oil. Now this is one onion that we've sliced very thinly, and we only want to get a little bit of color on these. We don't want to break down the texture. We want a little bit of their crunch left. So we have a little bit of color, throw it right in with the chilies and the cumin. So we do want this to be fairly hot. We'll go ahead and prep the wok with one teaspoon of grapeseed oil, and then we'll go ahead and transfer in half of our marinated beef and kind of encourage it up the sides of the wok so that way we could maximize surface area and really get a beautiful caramel color on all of these thin slices. So it's been about a minute, and I'm starting to see some caramelized bits, so I'm gonna go ahead and scrape it off the bottom of the pan and stir fry it all together until all of that pink turns golden brown. Now that that's fully cooked, we'll transfer that over to the large bowl. We'll go ahead and get started on the second batch. 
Now that we've cooked through all of the beef, let's go ahead and tie this dish together, shall we? So we'll take our five minced garlic cloves that have been mixed in with two teaspoons of grapeseed oil, and we'll add that to the pan. So I'm just gonna move it around until I could smell it, which I already do. Yep. We'll add in everything from that large bowl right into the pan. Excellent. So now, let's move things around. And we don't wanna overcook this too far. So that soy sauce vinegar sugar mixture is going to get poured in a gentle stream around the edges of the pan. So that way it cooks as it goes down and that sugar dissolves just a bit. Give that a quick little stir. And we're gonna cook this for about two minutes until that sauce thickens just slightly. At that point, we pull this off the heat. We add in a couple extra touches, two teaspoons of toasted sesame mm -hmm. oil, and finally, a cup and a half of roughly chopped cilantro. Just the leaves and the tender stems. It does look, I have to say, it smells great to It me. smells yeah. great. You have a variety of colors here and a lot of texture as well. Yeah, I just want to, to see you chewing on one of those Japonese peppers. Do you dare me? I'll do it. Uh, you probably will. <laughs> Boy, now we could go ahead and start yeah. eating. A little bit of rice into both of these bowls so we could start mowing down here. Take a little bit of this beef, transfer it right on top. And now, now you ready to take a bite? Yes, I'm ready. And just for you, Chris, I'll go ahead mm. and adjust one of these peppers. Once you do that right at the, the very end, <laughs> too late, <laughs> too late, he's already done it. <laughs> oh man, right? this is good. Assertive not aggressive. I'm so shocked that the chili, it does add flavor, but it's really not really, really spicy. So thanks to Josh, we have one of our favorite Tuesday night suppers, spicy stir fried cumin beef. It's got lots of flavor, lots of texture, and you can do this in about half an hour. Thank you, Josh. Absolutely. Chef Kanyan Chang presides over the kitchens at Xing Ye, the oldest white tablecloth restaurant in Taipei, a city not known for fancy dining. The cooking line consists of six woks sitting atop massive burners. The metal cooktop has water running on it constantly. There are two large metal containers of oil next to each station, one for fresh and one for used, plus spigots for water which are used to clean the woks between deep frying and stir frying. My interpreter, Rin Rin, explained that three cup chicken was named after the three basic ingredients, soy sauce, toasted sesame oil, and rice wine. Now this is not a literal one cup each, but there were three bowls at the ready, more soy sauce than sesame oil, and more oil than rice wine. Rin Rin then explained to me that Cheng, stocky, self-assured, friendly, and proud, had been working for four decades in the restaurant. He began by ladling a few cups of cooking oil into the massive wok, heated it for just a minute, added a plate of cut up skin on bone and chicken, and fried it for a few minutes to crisp the skin. He then scooped out the chicken, poured off the oil, added water to the wok, used a giant bamboo brush to clean it, and then added the aromatics, ginger, scallions, whole garlic, cloves, chilies, etc., and stir fried them. Then the chicken was added back, a liberal splash of rice wine with the soy sauce, the sesame oil, and sugar. The mixture then comes to a simmer while the sauce reduced and turned into a rich dark brown coating. Excellent. Simple enough and a walk tour de force. Thank you. Steep frying, stir frying, and braising all in minutes. Today's episode is uh, True Confessions. Hmm. I don't like True Confessions, but it's true. Many years ago, I wrote a story, an article called throw out your wok. It was based upon a cooking lesson I had in San Francisco with a Chinese cook who said she and all of her friends who come over from China did not use a wok on a flat American stovetop. They use a 12-inch nonstick skillet. And that's because the stovetop is flat, the skillet is flat, and they didn't have a lot of power in, in the, in the stovetop. Well, a lot of things have changed since then, besides me. One of them is that uh, woks, of course, have flatter bottoms now, and there's more power in many uh, stovetops at home. So I'm now a convert. I feel, I feel good now. I feel Absolutely much right. So the recipe we're making today is the Taiwanese three-cup chicken. 
Now that name came from the original formula used to make the chicken, which included a cup of soy sauce, a cup of rice wine, and a cup of sesame oil. So not surprisingly, that recipe has been adapted and changed over the years, but you know, the name stuck. This is a stir fry style dish and the ingredients are added in rapid succession. So it's crucial to have everything prepped in advance. And if you would be so kind as to get the walk started, we are going to make the sauce for the dish. We're starting with two teaspoons of cornstarch to give the sauce a little body. So to the two teaspoons cornstarch, we'll add a quarter cup of soy sauce. And then to that, three quarters cup of sake, which is the rice wine. And a little bit of brown sugar, two tablespoons worth. It just gives that sweet and salty balance and it helps round out the flavors of the sauce. And we're gonna set this aside. This is uh, one tablespoon grapeseed oil or any other refined neutral oil. And we're just gonna swirl this around a little bit to get all the surfaces coated. The chicken is gonna be the first thing that we add and we are using boneless, skinless chicken thighs cut into one inch strips. The thing is we wanna get the chicken in in a single layer. So quickly spread it out. Up the side. And then don't touch it for like five minutes because we want to give it a chance to get brown and develop some flavor. So while our chicken browns, this is going to be the longest period of time we're not adding anything to the wok. This needs about five minutes. We have 12 cloves of garlic sliced in half only. That gives a really beautiful visual appearance. One bunch of scallions cut in one inch lengths. One serrano chili sliced into thin rings. A quarter cup of minced fresh ginger. And then we're gonna add two tablespoons of toasted sesame oil. Okay. Okay. So I'm thinking it's ready. I think it's ready. Now it's browning on one side, but that's enough to give a look at that. That's enough to give a lot of good flavor. That's beautiful. So the first thing we're gonna add is the garlic. It's in larger pieces, and we're gonna give this three to four minute head start. The garlic's had a chance to start cooking and get a little soft. It's starting to get brown, so we want to go with the next thing. The scallions, the serranos, and the quarter cup of chopped fresh ginger. And then that little bit of sesame oil, two tablespoons. Oh, I love this. Only needs about a minute, and this is the sauce we made earlier. Just remember to give it a good stir before you add it back to the wok. Isn't that a great sound? So that needs about two to three minutes to thicken. Mm. Now we can talk about the very last ingredient, three full cups of lightly packed basil and the large leaves just want to tear up a little bit. So would you give that one more stir, please? You notice I jumped in right at the end as if I actually made this. <laughs> like, he who stands at the walk last is the one who cooked. Right. That's right. You just did the basil, man. <laughs> okay, now we're going to take it off the heat to add the basil. Because okay. all we want to do is wilt it. Okay, you may as well. No, go ahead. No, 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 you no, can... no. no. It's my turn to watch. Oh, okay. Well. Okay. The basil smell is mm. so strong, and yet the other stuff stands out too. Okay. Pretty good. Better than pretty good. All right, so now we get to serve it. And obviously we'd serve it over rice. What's great is you can see the whole little pieces of garlic, which are beautiful in there, the basil, the sauce, of course. Mm. Mm hmm. Given all those ingredients, it's still very light and it's very aromatic. It's very clean. It's mm -hmm. not heavy at all. And the basil. Oh man, the basil makes the whole thing so fresh tasting with the ginger. It's three cup chicken and I helped. <laughs> <laughs> so we went to Taipei and brought back this recipe for three cup chicken after spending an afternoon at the Xing Wei restaurant. Nice and light coating. It's not heavy or too sweet. Really a great recipe any time of the week. You can get this recipe, all of our recipes from this season of Milk Street Television at MilkStreetTV.com. Funding for this series was provided by the following. Ferguson's proud to support Milk Street and culinary crusaders everywhere. For more information on our extensive collection of kitchen products, we're on the web at FergusonShowrooms.com. For 25 years, Consumer Cellular has been offering no-contract wireless plans designed to help people do more of what they like. Our U.S.-based customer service team can help find a plan that fits you. To learn more, visit ConsumerCellular.tv. 
Cooking happens in the kitchen, but life happens around the kitchen table. The 1919 Collection, celebrating yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Visit us at www.1919cookware.com.